Did I tear my ACL for the second time in a year? Maybe yes, maybe no. But, you know, at least it was the other one, you know? Like, I didn't re-tear the old one that I already had torn. So, you know, now I'm just going to have matching knees. I just had to make it even. Um, did this on purpose. Anyways, so today, seeing as I'm qualified, going into my second ACL surgery of the year, not even been a year, I'm going to be making a video about how to prepare for ACL surgery. And some of these things are things that I did last time, and some of these things that I totally didn't do last time, but I wish I did. And or Number one on the list is to meal prep. Getting ACL surgery is not only extremely physically taxing, but it's also really tough mentally, and so once you're out of it, the last thing you're thinking about is, oh, I'm going to make myself a nutritious meal. What you're really thinking this about is, man, I can barely make it to the fridge. Like, And you're like, how am I supposed to hold this plate while I have two crutches in my hands? So, you know, as someone who is like, you know, most of the people who get ACL surgery is someone who's formally really active. And so that mental burden of just not being able to move freely anymore is really tough too. And a lot of people underestimate how difficult it is to lose that independence. So, last time, oh my gosh, my hair thing is falling off. One second. Uh, last time I tore my ACL, I lost all hope and I ate my feelings and I ended up at my lowest point eating an entire quart of peanut butter cup ice cream all by myself in one sitting. And so this time I'm putting a plan in place so that I can have better food throughout my recovery period. So, I still enjoy my ice cream almost every day, but now I do so by the bowl full instead of an entire tub. This time I focus really heavily on having my favorite healthy snacks around. So I have a lot of prepared fruit. I love carrots, so I have carrot sticks and then ranch and hummus and all sorts of stuff to dip carrot sticks in. And I also made some really good muffins. And so whenever I'm hungry or whenever I'm bored, basically, I'll have something to eat. And then as far as meals go, I made sure to take all the mental preparation and most of the physical preparation out of it. So some of my lunches I'm still going to make fresh and some of my breakfasts I'm still going to make fresh, but I made sure to at least plan out what I'm going to eat on those days. That way I don't have to think about it and I don't have to spend mental energy on that. One tip I have is to make sure that you get a balanced diet with plenty of protein, carbs, fats, and lots of fiber, plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. That way your body has all the building blocks it needs to rebuild all those ligaments and tendons and recover from surgery. Point number two is ice packs and pillows. These are going to save your life after surgery. I really recommend getting one of these old-fashioned ice packs because you can fill it with water and ice and it gets super cold and it's way colder than the type that you can get that are like gel and they go in the freezer. Those types are still good, but when you're first coming out of surgery, you're going to have a lot of ACE wrap wrapped around your leg and this type is the type that I've found that's only going to get through all those layers of bandage and you're going to feel that cold. And then the pillows are really just there to keep your foot elevated. So anywhere you're going to be sitting, so like the couch, your bed, you're going to want to make sure that you have a pile of pillows nearby. That way you can keep your leg elevated and keep that swelling down. Number three on the list is to practice with your crutches. So before you go into surgery, you want to make sure you have your crutches or however you're going to get around, but it's most likely crutches. And you're going to want to make sure that they're not only the appropriate size for you, so make sure the hand is the hand rests are in the correct place and make sure that it's adjusted to the correct height so that you're not resting on your armpits and you have at least two or three fingers of space in between your armpits and the top of the crutches because if you're resting in your armpits you can do some serious damage to the nerves there so you want to have all the weight on your hands and another tip is if your crutches are ones that have kind of been sitting around your house from maybe yours or a previous surgery you want to make sure that you replace the ends on those because they deteriorate really quickly when they're just sitting around and so that rubber could slip or break or lead you to fall and you don't want that to happen. Tip number four is to prepare your space. 
you want to remove any tripping hazards and when you're going around practicing with your crutches you want to take notice if there's like something big and bulky like I don't know a box or something in the way of you're being able to crutch because crutching takes a lot wider of a space than walking does. You want to make sure you move that out of the way. One second. Mm -hmm. um, you also want to move everything that you're going to need close to the couch or the bed where you're going to be spending most of your time. I recommend having tissues, a trash can, water, a few small snacks, any television remotes or radio remotes, blankets, headphones, and then also you're maybe going to want your books or small little crafts or anything that you might be doing to keep you entertained. Tip number I maybe have forgotten what tip we're on now, but is you're going to want to take a really good shower before you go into surgery. So after surgery, um, showering is going to be pretty damn close to impossible because you're not going to be able to take your brace off your leg for a couple days and then after that you're going to have stitches and open things that can't get wet and depending on what type of waterproof bandages they may or may not give you, you know, you might not be able to get those wet at all. So you want to make sure that you want to, if you want to shave your legs, shave your legs. If you want to exfoliate, exfoliate. You know, do all that before because you're not going to want to do it afterwards. And then the very last shower that you take before your surgery, you have to make sure, depending on your surgeon's instructions, but most surgeons, surgery centers are going to want you to take a shower with antibacterial, unscented soap, and then afterwards don't put any lotion on, no deodorant, no nothing like that. And also remember to take off your nail polish. Okay, the next tip is to get a good pair of slip-on shoes. Preferably ones that you can wear without socks, like slippers or Birkenstocks, but my preferred choice is a pair of Hey Dudes because you, they're really easy to get your heels into. And after surgery, it's going to be really hard to get that back part over your heel because you're not going to be able to bend your leg and you're not going to be able to support your weight on that leg. So go ahead and do yourself a favor and make sure that you have a good pair of slip-on shoes lying around. The next tip that I have is to have a trusted person manage your pain medication. So, last year, I was in a different situation, and I was still, you know, a kid, kind of living at home with my parents. And this year, I'm living on my own, but I'm coming back to recover for surgery for a few weeks at my parents' house. And I'm still choosing to have my parents manage my pain medication, because it can be pretty dangerous if you take it in too close to intervals, and it can be pretty tempting when you're recovering from surgery that you just want to go to sleep and your leg hurts and you get to the end of like the six or the eight hours or however long it is between whatever medication your doctor is giving you and you kind of are feeling it and you know it's like I just want to you know take another one and pass out and not have to deal with this pain anymore but that can be pretty dangerous so I'd really recommend having someone else just put out your medication for you every however many hours, and that way you're still in control and you can take it or not take it. But it just kind of takes away that temptation. And obviously, if the person who's taking care of you after your surgery is or has been an addict, don't put them in a position to relapse and just go ahead and take care of that on your own. Uh, the next tip is to take a trip to the library. This is my favorite one. I love reading. But I also love, you know, watching YouTube. And you're going to be watching a lot of movies and TV and all sorts of crap to keep yourself entertained. And eventually it's going to turn your mind mush and you're not going to want to watch it anymore. And so I really recommend getting some good books, maybe some childhood favorites, ones with fun pictures. Just go crazy. I got a huge stack and I'm trying to hold off on looking at them until my surgery because they are all so fun. And I really am excited to look at them after the surgery. My last tip is to mentally prepare yourself. It's a really tough challenge to deal with, especially as most of the people going through ACL surgery are athletes. And not only are you dealing with, you know, surgery, which is scary in its own right, but you're also dealing with the loss of your sport, which is a huge mental burden to go through. You have to give yourself some grace. 
no matter how many tubs of ice cream you eat, or how many hours you spend wallowing in self-pity, if you make that decision to get up the next day and you're still alive at the end of it, then that's, that's all you can really hope for. Because guess what I did last time I had surgery? I spent most of my recovery crying on the floor. And guess what? My, my knee that I had surgery on is still intact. Can't say the same for the one that was supposed to be my good knee. But, uh, you know, I turned out okay. And even if you don't do any of these things to prepare, you'll still turn out okay. Because that's what I did last time. Didn't prepare at all. And remember that you're not alone. Even though it can feel really isolating, ACL tears are unfortunately pretty common. And there's probably someone around you who's been through this before. It's not going to be the end of the world. And I know it. I know that it can feel like it, and I know that it can feel like it's not worth going on, but I promise you're going to make it out of this. And I would just say that in the past year, the difference between the past time I tore my ACL and this time, I've grown so much as a person, and I wouldn't be here without that experience. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing. I've grown so much in the past year. And sometimes it's these obstacles that we need to help make us stronger. So, if you, like me, are going on this journey of tackling this obstacle together, I am praying every good thing for you. And if you'd like to follow me on my journey as I go through surgery and rehab over the next couple months, I would love to have you subscribe and turn on notifications. And I'll see you guys all later.